Hello everyone and welcome back to Yosemite Valley Zoo. In today's episode, which is hopefully the start of a new little wave of uh, interest for you guys and also excitement, because this episode will be the foundation of this zoo and I'm talking about the actual zoo. So this has been a quite a long time coming and I've spent a few hours actually building this episode. Now, this is the half dome of Yosemite Valley as it is in real life and I took this as an inspiration this is obviously a mountain face and uh, it's, it's kind of one of the most famous things you can see in a Yosemite Valley um, or in the Yosemite National Park I should say and I took this as an inspiration and here's me now while you see some stuff going on in the background preparing of this habitat which is going to be uh, the lemur uh, habitat which is the red left uh, red raft I should say lemur and also the ring-tailed lemur that are going together into this episode uh, into this habitat Rudy, get your facts right. Now, um, I've thought about this a long, long time. There's a lot I need to talk about, talk about in today's episode, which is uh, really about my process of of getting there and why I decided to do so. So what you're seeing is finally the, the, the final iteration of what I did. Um, but I had multiple goes at it uh, in, in, in front and there was a lot more going on uh, in advance to this episode. So I wanted to have something that is really... I should say iconic in a way, but it is still somehow realistic, but it also fulfills the, the need of, of being somewhat um, iconic to the Yosemite Valley area, but also to this park, and at the same time fulfills the need that I had to hide away a kind of a big um, yeah, backstage area, which you've seen that I laid this already out. Uh, I put all the facilities down already, so I know where exactly they are, there you can see them. Um, and this is going to be very interesting. I must say, since I do obviously know the result, and you've seen that potentially from the thumbnail, uh, it did work out quite well, but it was quite a struggle to get there. So. I was testing the limits of what you can do with multiple things in here. I have, I have to say that this, this habitat in itself is one of the best ones I've built so far. Um, for many, many reasons I'm going to talk about when we are actually there at this point. Also, a little hint already, at the end of this episode you're not gonna get cinematics. I have recorded a little bit of an in-game uh, live part, so I'm going to show you the habitat with the animals in, in action. Um, because I, I took some cinematics, but honestly, for this particular thing it didn't work out. Now we are talking about the first thing here now and this is my approach on making this habitat somewhat realistic to zoos. Now there are some things in zoos to consider what they do to provide certain views, to provide certain things for the animals and to provide well also some realism aspects um, in terms of uh, actual problems uh, such as being rain for example. I know people have been commenting about fires as well which are pretty likely in this area. We are going to talk about that much more in the future but there's also some rain coming down and pouring down down in some of the rainy seasons and um, if you're building a habitat like I do which is lowered down a bit um, and I'm going to talk about this reason a little bit more in, in, in a couple of minutes but first of all I wanted to make this little drainage uh, system over here so once it's raining and we already went into this valley quite a bit and we have this this path meandering down into this area over here so when it's raining quite heavy and the water will automatically go down to the lowest point, which in fact will be more inside the valley rather than up there where our parking lot is. And in general, this is also one of the reasons why the parking lot and stuff is all a bit higher uh, leveled. And I hit basically also my, my, my table. So if, if you had some weird noises now, I'm sorry, I just hit it. I I'm stupid. Um, anyway, so I wanted to keep this little bit of realism aspect in here because I felt like this would be very nice as, as a kind of gimmick because it doesn't really fulfill the job but if the rain is pouring down in the game we can at least uh, kind of say it would be uh, to prevent this um, kind of yeah lower down area to uh, run full of water because that would be pretty bad for our lemurs uh, since they are not the best swimmers and uh, also they don't really like water that much anyway so yeah uh, also we don't want our uh, you know staff members to be in there and, and drown and this is also the reason why i put this drainage system in and i wanted also to have this uh, kind of concrete uh, overlapping thing which is basically fundamental to our fencing but i wanted to make this like something that is actually holding off the lemurs from climbing up that concrete wall as you know in the game the lemurs don't climb the concrete wall anyways but i just wanted to have this extra bit of realism so for example if there are some scratches and, and some some 
broken pieces and uh, in the wall, the lemurs could still climb it. But since you do have this little bit of an overlapping thing there, and you could even say there's, you know, some kind of a little lip below that the lemurs cannot climb over the 90 degrees and uh, it goes well into the 120-ish degrees or whatever of an incline. Um, oh god, I'm so sorry. Um, but it, it kind of, uh, yeah, just doesn't work this way and so this is kind of a realism aspect here now this is the first thing i wanted to talk about it's like the really the idea why i built it the way it is now why did i do this why do i have this little um lower down area caved out at the beginning and make this like a more or less like a upper viewing gallery if you will like it's it's really like the people standing there it is all about the views and I have to get, uh, give huge props also to Rubel Trilliums, uh, who who did uh, explain that a bit better than I can ever do um, in his episode of the Lions Habitat. So. Apparently, zoos try to bring uh, the guests as close as possible to the animals while making sure that the animals do not escape their habitat. Now, there are plenty of ways to do it with like windows and stuff, but you know, you always want to have it as natural as possible. And uh, as you as you potentially can tell from a lot of franchise uh, mode zoos, you do see now that um, they are looking pretty, but they are using quite a lot of the walls, like the barriers actually. And it starts to look somewhat unrealistic because in a real zoo, they they try to hide the barriers as much as possible in the natural environment and just make sure that the animals cannot escape on a natural way. So then you have to kind of find a way to bring the animals closer to the guests without actually having a danger of, of the escape happening. Now, one thing you can do is, as I did this here, um, you have this lower down area. So as a guest, if you stand there, you're looking at this little island. But the thing is, because of the perspective and because of the way you do it, it almost feels like you're eye level with the ground, which in fact you are. So if the, the guests are standing on the viewing area and they're looking over to this island you have the feeling they are closer to you and they are more likely on on the same level now to to bring this effect to a max you would have needed to bring this whole um, island a little bit closer to the guests however we have pretty good climbers here um, and I I didn't want to risk anything so this is why I made this little bit of a, um, a further distance in between so you don't need that you, you could go closer and in fact in zoos they are a lot closer and you know talking about lemurs here because you know, many lemurs live in, in walkable or walk-in habitats anyway, so this could be possible. I, did, I didn't want to have that, so um, that's why. Another reason for why I'm doing this half domish thing, and now uh, we are getting to a point where I, I did cut out a lot because uh, for me this was a stupid thing. I don't even know what happened, but I, I couldn't really copy this around the way I wanted it. I did some kind of mistake on the grid. I still haven't figured out which exact mistake that was, but it was a nightmare to copy this dome around to get it around because it, it just wouldn't line up. So I had a huge struggle doing this. And at some point I'm going to cut out footage. Um, I, I'm just showing what I did so you guys get an idea of what I did. I, I just was then aligning it all hand by hand just to make sure that it kind of works. And that was awful. I was kind of a pain. Uh, this is also why it took me that long. Now, I was also doing some kind of designs for the dome. Uh, even after the live stream I had, I, I changed the design a little bit uh, because I wasn't too happy. Because the design also is borrowing a lot of its inspiration from the same hotel we used um, at the beginning uh, in, in the entrance. But it also uses a lot inspiration from some other buildings I found in the Yosemite Valley, which are a bit more natural, a bit more timber-like. And uh, yeah, you can see now we are uh, jumping a lot forward in this episode, which is badly needed. Uh, you can see that I created a bit more of a half-ish roof. Now, when I showed this to some people, they thought it was, was kind of a broken down dome and hence I changed it later on a little bit more. This is not the idea. The idea is that this dome over here is man-made and this is completely like it, it's more like a modern design that borrows uh, influences from the, the traditional buildings that you find in these areas. So yeah, I just wanted to make sure that uh, this this dome really is not looking too modern. You know what I mean? If it is, is in this area, it shouldn't look too modern because it, it it's not meant to be that kind of 
very modern age dome building uh, as I did this in in my very first famous uh, Gamescom video which I'm still blown away by how many people have seen that uh, by by the time today uh, it's insane um, but yeah this was a pretty modern approach on it but I just wanted to make something more traditional more natural and using a lot of the material that you would see here um, you know uh, usually and I feel like at least for me I'm pretty happy with the design I I, I think Again, as I said, I wanted to go as realistic as possible, but also to leave me as much freedom to go creative as much as I needed. So I, again, I, this is not aimed uh, to be on a Isanapali kind of level. I just want to remind you in each and every episode because otherwise I would force myself too much into something I don't want at this point. We we might want to try this in the future or maybe in some single episodes or whatever to, to build like completely realistic things, like inch perfect things like every single bit done as you would do it in real life. Um, this one should be, again, to fulfill the needs of a decent realism, but still leave us some space, please, to, you know, realize the things that we think look great. And I do agree that the Planet of the Apes one is way over the top. So, uh, yeah, it definitely it definitely doesn't suit this park. I totally agree. But at this point, I think this habitat will definitely suit this uh, park or this zoo uh, quite a lot because it definitely fulfills what we need. And now this is the next thing I need to talk about. Quite a lot of uh, thoughts that went into. I hope you guys uh, uh, do appreciate this because um, I, I spend a long time really thinking about this habitat. And now, as you can see, I built also some kind of uh, uh, connections here which are using the iron beams uh, or the iron guiders I, I should say or gu guiders I think it's guiders right or girders uh, girders guiders whatever pronunciation totally off here now to kind of make this really like finished and not having these open sides here uh, with wood because you know you also need to make sure that the weather is not too much of an influence here so uh, you would want to have these open sides covered up uh, with some more durable material which I guess it is now and then I figured I need to put a roof in and the reason for that is mainly so the ring-tailed lemur and the red ruffed lemur they are from Madagascar and Madagascar um, I thought it was way hotter than it would be in this area so it is tropical climate but it's not if it's not as much hotter as I thought so it's it's not it's really not jungle like that the whole year is uh, you know uh, over 30 degrees or whatever um, Celsius I should add it's not as as much as that but it's still it's a lot more humid and it's a lot more warm in the most uh, times of the year so this is why I wanted to create some kind of uh, a glass roof dome ish thing with a roof in there so that kind of um, keeps the heat and the humidity inside so I will also put some heaters later to create this uh, feel of humidity in there as well um, for the moment the weather is kind of okay but I, I want to make the zoo really running in all seasons so that's why and I'm still secretly hoping for some kind of a scenario mode maybe in the future where we could open this zoo and really have some seasons as a challenge and see if the the zoo is holding up and yeah then again uh, we are talking about a little bit of a, a rock formation here in the middle again huge props to uh, Mr. Mike Sheets further known as N7 uh, he did um, some amazing work in uh, some other parks um, he's calling it uh, the garden rescue and if i'm not mistaken that was in yonti's uh, the geekism series uh, where he did a wonderful uh, thing if i'm not wrong and if i'm not spoiling here anything um i'm not even sure if it's done yet or whatever but um the thing is his work is just insane in terms of landscaping and uh, I, I really hope that I didn't spoil anything. If so, I'm really sorry. Uh, you guys should all watch the episode and go over to him and sub it. Uh, sub him, obviously, because he's doing amazing work. Um, and yeah, he just showed that technique of, of really putting all these rock faces very, very much into the landscaping thing and then you just use the brush with the lowest possible uh, intensity and and just paint it all over to make it really join uh, the rock as rock face as much as possible so it creates this wonderful natural looking rock face uh, which is borrowing some styles of the uh, actual terrain but also from most likely the rock textures which are way better uh, and not as repetitive as the rock textures themselves so yeah now we're getting to go into foliage work which was a bit tricky I must admit I I wanted to make, uh, I had a certain idea in mind, I wanted to make the inside look tropical enough to be believable like a greenhouse. 
whilst I want to have the outside uh, more or less a bit more lush so the people can see them climb and the focus should really be on the f on the climbing frames so I can already say we will get rid of these palm trees the two in the middle which unfortunately I will use first of all as climbing rigs so I will uh, then change this later on because I felt it didn't really fit it because they were blocking too much of the view into the dome and I wanted to change this and so we didn't really get rid of the palm trees completely so I moved them only over a little bit to make sure we have a nice view but they're still within the habitat so you know we are not killing any plants here there was no plant harm in this animal and let's let's not go into this one but as you can see I am using most likely all the pieces here to create also some stairs some letters and stuff um, mainly the inspiration was to um, create a climbing rig which they can use and run over the whole time to make really some kind of fun for the guests as well to see what they're doing and I was looking also from, for some kind of roping but the ropes are not really usable in the game I must admit I really hope for some new iterations in the future I yeah not not the biggest fan of the ropes well too too long too too thick too weird I don't know um, fortunately I could work together with some of the vines here and fortunately enough the animals can climb them both of them so that's pretty pretty good um, even though the game doesn't show me them as climbable which is which is weird but they are uh, as I know and they use it so you will see that in the end of this episode um, but yeah so here goes my main talk about my inspiration and that was quite a lot. Uh, usually I don't have that much on here but I uh, this time I really did my research and I really really had some inspiration going on and again this all comes together to the half dome approach which is on a meter level really the connection to the Yosemite Valley because it's so famous the half dome is so famous that I wanted to incorporate that into this kind of main building which you can say is definitely a weenie building in that kind of sense that it is the main focus point that you do have when you go down here into the valley. If we may have two or three more of the weenies, I cannot say that at this point, but for sure this is now the weenie that you have seen. You have also seen I, I built a little staircase um, for the staff members that they are hopefully going to use eventually to go up to this um, animal feeder, because there's one enrichment feeder on a platform which they otherwise couldn't have reached, and I really hope they do it. Now, we are getting into the finishing touches here. Uh, again, that's not, that's not final, it's just for the moment. Um, in the backstage episode, I will then fill the these areas in a bit more uh, for the moment it's only just to to see if it all works together a bit nicer I just want to create a bit more greenery around the um, around the rocks to make them also look a bit more overgrown but we will definitely do this in the future a bit more uh, I just put some trees um, like regional trees in in the back to see how this works together it was just a test to see if it's um, for, for view wise working and you can see I deleted one of the bigger ones I might also want to consider to delete more of those um, to the sides as well because the dome is kind of I don't know it Maybe it has to be a bit more prominent, so I really want to see if I can do it uh, later on. You will have to judge yourself uh, in in the end when I show it to you in real time, because that really is what makes it. Um, and yeah, guys, I really hope you enjoyed my time lapse this time. Uh, we are about to end with the time lapse, but you have some more minutes with me together in the real time part. Now enjoy this one, and uh, we are going to see each other at the other side of the cut, which is going to be in a few seconds. Alright guys, as promised, uh, this time no cinematics at the end, uh, because I felt like it's a little bit hard to show off this exhibit in cinematics. However, we are now in the real recording, like real time, real life, whatever you want to call it, and this is the habitat, and I wanted to show this off because I felt like this is really important. It's not completely done, it will be major work, it will have to be done in the next backstage episode, because that's kind of what you want to do to finish it all off. Um, yeah, so as I said, uh, I wanted to have this view over here nicely so that you can look in here and I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna move this tree over as well you just have this open view you have seen in the episode there were two trees I moved them afterwards uh, because I felt they are blocking the view too much and um, yeah I just wanted to keep this a little bit open we have some trees later on here so that you won't see this pathway entirely there will also go a fence so that people don't you know jump down here that uh, would be a bad idea um, and then you just walk all the way down let's just do this quickly uh, we just go down here to the 
um, down this little hill, and then you are here, and you watch inside this habitat. And I felt like that is a pretty cool view, because now you can really see the lemurs all climb over here, you can really see um, how they're playing, you can see some of uh, the people, like for example this uh, keeper dude there, or the girl, uh, proving uh, the stuff out. And the cool bit is also, you cannot really see down here directly, so it's a bit of a privacy area for the animals, so uh, they can look in here and whatever. Um, they can still have their fun. One thing, I don't know if they can reach it or not, but I didn't get the message they can't, uh, cannot do. So this is actually made so that the people, the staff members, can get up and refill this feeder. I really hope that works. Um, but you can see the animals are using pretty much everything to climb. I decided, as I said, to change this a little bit over here. And uh, yeah, I feel like it looks really cool how they use this all. Like like they, they love to sit here behind that one, they jump into the trees, they come out of the trees. So it feels a lot more organic than whatever I built in beta. So yeah, it's pretty cool. You can see it. Also, it's working pretty good. Like yes, there is some clipping, some awkward stuff, but it's not as bad as it was. So, well, are they attacking each other? Oh no, they're not. Um, and I have to say, I, I love these these reddish uh, rough lemurs. Like they are, I didn't even know they are bigger than their ring-tailed lemur friends. But I kind of fell in love with them. They they look a bit dull, a little stupid, but <laughs> I still love them. So yeah, again, this is only what I wanted to show you um, how this looks in in total, like in in real. And uh, I think if we move around, you can clearly tell what my goal was. So this little rock in the middle where I spent most of the time to make it look actually nice enough. Uh, what is is kind of the my, you know, the thing I'm most proud of because it really fulfills the need I wanted to. This is kind of the climbable uh, rock in the middle. It all feels like being organic and yeah, then you do have this kind of area down here which uh, is a bit more zoo-ish like with the concrete and stuff. And if you go into the back area, we have this uh, little shelter thing, whatever this is, and we have a covered off area where the zookeepers can get in. So that's pretty much backstage. So if the keepers go in here, um, you can, oh yeah, well, by the way, uh, if you haven't seen that, I put the Bonobo in because she's pregnant and I need to wait until she has offspring to get rid of it. Um, that's a bit of a pity, but that's the only chance we have. Um, I, I cannot sell this animal until she had offspring and for whatever reason they seem to be pretty much happy together and uh, she's also pretty happy in the habitat so maybe I'm just keeping her just as a little I don't know easter egg or whatever and we all know it uh, it's not an easter egg but it's like a dude you're not well but I just said it's looking accurate please well, well, listen to me. Um, anyways, guys, that's your bit. And I really hope that um, you guys enjoyed today's episode. I already uh, hope that this kicked off the series again because it kind of declined uh, dramatically last time. I know you guys gave me so many good comments, but, you know, it's obvious that even my even my franchise zoo mode makes um, uh, seems to be more interesting for people. So I really hope that this uh, lovely little habitat half-dome thing uh, is actually catching your attention a bit more. If it does, let me know below in the comments. If you don't like anything about this or if you dislike something, please let me know in the comments down below as well because I need the feedback to improve and I would be more than happy if you could give it down below in the comments. Until then, have a wonderful Saturday, guys, and we see each other in the next one. Until then, have a great time and bye, guys. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video, I really do appreciate that. As always, uh, make sure to check out also my social media channels, you can find me everywhere under at RudyRunCamel. Also, big thanks to the crew, uh, you can see it on the left hand side right now. And as always, if you want to see more, you click that card on the top right. And if you want to stick around because you like the stuff you've just saw, you just saw, whatever, you know what I mean, just uh, click that sub button which is to the bottom right of the screen right now. But everything else I can say is have a great time and see you next time. Bye guys.